What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Penny. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2022 Hyundai Elantra courtesy of Jack G and Volvo Hyundai in York PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So you guys probably already know this one was redesigned for last year. And so this is now the second year for the redesign. Not only that, the Elantra starts at under $20,000. So it is a pretty good price point for this vehicle it does come with America's best warranty being five years 60,000 miles bumper to bumper 10 year 100,000 miles then on the powertrain you also get three years of complimentary maintenance So you don't have to pay for things like the oil changes tire rotations things like that basically And so in this video I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all of that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2022 elantra first one being the se starting at nineteen thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars then there is the sel which is the one we have today starting at twenty one thousand one hundred dollars and lastly the limited then starting at twenty five thousand six hundred dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the elantra is going to be the same powering this one is a two liter multi-port injected inline four cylinder putting out 147 horsepower at six 6200 rpm 132 pound feet of torque coming in at 4500 rpm power set to the front wheels through an ivt that stands for intelligent variable transmission zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 8.4 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 33 in the city 43 on the highway for the se trim level and then 31 city 41 highway for the other two trim levels taking regular unleaded fuel but so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our launcher i do want to mention the drive mode so that drive mode button it is silver and it is located just to the left of the shifter there that will include normal sport and smart adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity then as well so now having got it all out, out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put this thing here to the test and let's see how quickly the new Elantra here is going to get us up to speed all right you guys here we go in three two one go There it is. <laughs> At the very end there, it finally kicked in, but not the quickest thing in the world. Shouldn't have any issues in merging onto the highway, but wouldn't have minded a bit more power here in the Elantra. But having said that, I didn't mention it yet because they are their own separate vehicles really, but there is an N line as well as a new Elantra N coming out. Those two are essentially the equivalent of the Honda Civic Si and the Honda Civic Type R. So those are going to be the ones that you want to go with if you want more power. But Having said that, again, shouldn't have any issues emerging onto the highway with this one. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11 inch ventilated front discs in the back 10 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it is going to come in at an impressive 116 feet. That is wonderful, you guys. Typically with sedans, it comes in in the 120. So 116 feet is definitely very impressive, especially for what this vehicle is at the price point that it's at so wonderful braking on this one there's no brake pedal delay or anything like that so very impressed with the braking then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back torsen beam rear axle front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's really not that bad to be honest so i will say i feel like the previous generation for whatever reason was a little bit smoother with the ride quality but with this being a compact car it isn't usually something you expect so i will say this is pretty much on par for the course as far as ride quality goes i would say even a little bit better than average when it comes to compact cars so no issues with the ride quality as far as steering feel goes it is an immediate noticeable difference when you change up the driving modes when it comes to that steering feel if i were to put it in sport driving mode you immediately notice a heavier weight to the steering as opposed to the comfort driving mode that i currently have it in it is a noticeably loosey-goosey steering feel so if you wanted that heavier steering feel go with the sport driving mode if you wanted a looser steering feel take it out of the sport driving mode essentially so it's really something for everybody as far as cabin noise goes at higher speeds i get a little bit of wind noise coming in but it's not that bad and it pretty much is once again as expected for a compact car so it wouldn't bother me personally then touching on visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back absolutely no issues whatsoever when it comes to visibility on the elantra but 
That about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Hyundai Elantra. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2022 Hyundai Elantra, completely blacked out. Looks pretty darn good, actually, all black. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Gloss black front grille coming with the SE and SEL trims. Then if you were to jump up to the Limited, that will come with a dark chrome front grille. So slight difference when it comes to the trim levels when it comes to that front grille, I should say. But then looking down to the corners there, you will find front air curtains for all trim levels across the board. Taking a look at the headlights, they are projector style halogen headlights for the SE and SEL. They do come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard with those headlights as well. LED headlights though coming with the limited trim. So if you wanted a little added illumination at night, limited trim is where you're gonna wanna be at for that. And like I said in my last review of this one, much lower hood line comparatively speaking to the previous generation, which gives it a much more aggressive appearance up front. So definitely a fan of the front end, but that pretty much rounds out the front of the Elantra here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, and so now since we are around to the side of this one, black window surrounds coming with the SE and SEL. Chrome window surrounds then coming with the Limited. Taking a look at the door handles, they are going to be body color door handles for all trim levels. And that's kind of to be expected anyways for compact cars. Power adjustable body colored side mirrors coming with all trim levels. And I do like the Z style accenting into the side of the Elantra as well. It's one of those design elements that you see on no other cars out there right now. It's kind of hard to see actually on a black exterior, but if you were to go with the lighter exterior it's definitely more pronounced but it looks pretty darn good in my opinion then take a look down at the wheel configuration 15 inch alloys coming with the se 16 inch alloys coming with the sel and lastly 17 inch alloys then coming with the limited trim level so very cool sport back style when it comes to the side profile of the elantra but that pretty much rounds off the side let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of this one all right and so but now since we are around to the back of the elantra body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top somewhat of an integrated rear spoiler let me actually show you guys because i know it's kind of hard to tell but there's definitely a very pronounced something i don't know if you can call that an integrated rear spoiler or not i know it's not technically but it kind of looks like it is so pretty darn good look in the back if you ask me for that then of course you do have a launcher lettering spelled out horizontally in typical hyundai fashion as they do with all of their vehicles and if you wanted led taillights that does come standard on the limited trim level only of course to tie in together with the led headlights up front and just below it all there is a single exhaust outlet tucked away so i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around back of the Elantra, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are a few different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob, that is one way. There is also a button by the driver's left foot, that is yet another way. And my favorite way, there is an integrated button into the trunk itself, kind of separating the two sides of the taillights. That is yet another way to go ahead and do that. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there actually are some levers found in the trunk. To go ahead and fold those second row seats down, simply just pull on that. There is a 60-40 split, so that allows a good bit more space than if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting back there, and if you were to lift up underneath the cargo floor, that is where you're going to find your spare tire, in case anybody was curious. But now, let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 38 inches even. For reference, I am even 6 feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders. If you were to go with the limited it is going to be optional for the sel we don't have that option though today no charging ports no rear ventilation don't really need rear ventilation in a vehicle of this size anyways but let's now go ahead and make our way up to the front seats cloth seating coming with the se and sel leather seating then coming with the limited trim level manually adjustable seating for the se and sel then if you were to go with the limited you will find a power driver seat with power lumbar heated front seats then coming with the limited that feature is going to be optional for the se yet again we don't have that option though today but overall seating is okay it is relatively comfortable not the most comfortable seating i've ever experienced but 
it is just okay. I would imagine the limited trim would give you much more comfortable seating with its power adjustable seats, with its lumbar support, things like that. But seating is okay. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped. If you were to go with the limited trim level only, then making your way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side. Then if you flip it around, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch. And actually the circular button that says hold, that is your remote start, which is pretty cool. And that is going to come in the SEL trim level and the limited, along with the push button start as well. And then if you were to go with the limited, you're actually going to get a digital key where you can just hold your phone up after you download the app, of course. Anyways, I'm just going to put my phone on the brake and press that engine start button there and so once started up this is what the gauges are going to look like for the se and sel however there is a full 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster for the limited but don't have that one today so i'm not going to obviously show it to you but tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is front and center there is a small digital portion of the gauges all the way to your right to control what is on that digital screen simply use the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side you can choose to display a digital speedometer if you wanted to what driving mode you're in trip a trip b of course there are some safety features how many miles you have left until you hit empty as well and a ton of other information included as well so pretty much everything you could possibly want and need up on the gauges but then making our way to overall interior quality power sunroof coming with the limited optional then on the sel we don't have that option wireless phone charger coming standard with the limited like i was saying that is optional for the sel so that is not only going to be that wireless phone charger but also the digital key is going to come with that as well of course dual zone climate control then coming with the sel trim level and up you will find multicolor ambient lighting then for the limited trim level only but Overall, when it comes to interior quality, I do like the dual zone climate control that we have on our SEL. I like the design to the vents. It kind of reminds me of Audi a little bit because you have those three bars going across just above the passenger side glove box. It's just like a continuation of the air vent, although it's not really fully an air vent, but it's a continuation of it. So I like the design for that aspect. But my favorite part about the design of the Elantra is this bar type of ordeal separating the driver and the passenger. And the reason that I like that, I think it's kind of like they pulled it off the C8 Corvette. That's what the C8 Corvette is known for. They actually put buttons and stuff on theirs, but Anyways, I think it's a pretty cool design element. Just in front of the shifter, you have two USB charging ports, a 12 volt power outlet, and a little bit of rubberized storage as well. Just behind the shifter, you do have dual cup holders, and within the center armrest, a decent amount of storage. Not a whole lot, but good amount. So. Overall, interior quality is pretty much as I would expect it to be. If you want the very best interior quality, obviously go with the limited trim level. But then making our way to the infotainment screen here, 8-inch color touchscreen display coming with the SE and SEL. Then if you were to jump up to that limited trim level, you will find a 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display. So either way, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming, but Android Auto Apple CarPlay, it does come standard on all trim levels, but if you go with the SE or SEL, it is wireless. That's the one you want. You want the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay so you don't have to hook your phone up and have all those pesky wires just in front of the shifter. So I don't know why it's wireless on those two. Then you have the wired connection with the limited when you pay more money. That doesn't make sense to me, but that is the way it's set up. So I did want to emphasize that to you guys. But either way, Android Auto Apple CarPlay either way. So that's pretty cool. But you can, of course, check out your radio information up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, you will find six speakers for the SE and SEL and then an eight speaker Bose sound system for the limited, which is optional on the SEL if you wanted it. But having said that, we do have the six speaker sound system here with us today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's listen to some Justin Bieber. And let's test out the clarity of this one. I gotta say, I'm not a believer when it comes to that sound system. I've heard better sound systems. The Bose ought to kill it. That is a basic sound system, not the best six speaker sound system I've ever heard by any means. It'll get the job done. Don't get me wrong. It'll get the job done, but there are better options like with the limited trim level, for example. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Elantra in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I want to mention, IIHS top safety pick, which actually pretty much says it all right there. That's a wonderful thing. Front side side current airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all boring, but 
also coming standard on every single trim level of the Elantra will include forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. Usually you have to go in upper trim levels of other manufacturers to get that one. Lane keep assist, which is a brilliant system on Hyundai. I've tested that out a million times. Lane following assist, driver attention warning system, high beam assist, which if you have your high beams on it, it senses a car coming in the opposite direction. It's going to dim it to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to put it back to high beams for you. So it's just automatic high beams basically it's pretty darn cool also safe exit warning then as well but then if you were to jump up to the limited you will get rear parking sensors reverse parking collisions avoidance assist and highway drive assist then as well which is kind of hyundai's autonomous driving system but overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the elantra great exterior styling i really do like the exterior styling in this one because it's different definitely makes a statement and it's like nothing else on the road right now digital gauges being available is a huge plus i personally prefer them i would have loved to have seen them here in our elantra today but that's what i would go with wireless android auto apple carplay is a huge win i love wireless connectivity and that is what this particular trim has with us today the sel that's pretty cool digital key is also a very nice option the reason i personally like it is because if your key fob for whatever reason were to fail you don't actually have to get somebody to tow you then to the nearest hyundai dealership because you got the app on your phone you can still get in your car you can still start it up by just using your smartphone you don't even need to get your car towed that's so cool and you don't even have to ever carry your keys with you technically if you have that app on your phone and your phone's not dead i should put that little caveat in there as well also america's best warranty that's peace of mind three years free maintenance that'll save you money the only downside the only constructive criticism i guess you could say with this particular configuration is it is kind of slow but like i said the n line and the elantra n will fix that if you wanted a bit more power but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know what i will see you guys all in the next video there's a spider on my windshield stay gold